welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and I typically like to do fashion DIYs. And in today's video, I have decided to tackle the bucket hat. I have never worn a bucket hat in my life, but for some reason I had this weird urge to just make a bunch of them. So that is exactly what I did. And I'm happy I made a few because it took me about four tries to actually figure out how to do it the way I wanted to do it and make it the way I want. So if you would like to see how to make a winterized bucket hat made out of fleece, then keep on watching. So since I didn't own a bucket hat, it was kind of difficult to draw my own pattern. So I opted for using a pre-existing pattern and I ended up choosing this one from the Essentials Club here on YouTube. And I will link her tutorial as well as her blog where you can find the pattern yourself if you're interested. I decided to shorten the brim of the hat by half an inch. This was with the seam allowances in mind. So this step is completely unnecessary, but since I have such little experience with bucket hats, I decided to make a bucket hat out of muslin first to make sure the fit was what I wanted before moving on to the fabric of my choice. So after making my mock-up, I realized I didn't love the brim of the hat still. I wanted it to flip out a bit more, so I adjusted the pattern by adding one inch to the bottom of the brim, leaving the top edge the same so it will still line up with the other pattern pieces. I was lucky enough to get my hands on various colors of these fleece fabrics before the lockdown. Thanks mom! I am going to be starting with the navy one. I also decided that I am going to line them and add interfacing to the brim. For the lining, I used cotton and even got to repurpose this sleeve I cut off from another project. I cut two of the head pattern pieces on the fold as well as one circle pattern piece. So once everything is cut, I have three lining pieces, four fleece brim pieces, two fleece hat pieces, one circle fleece piece, and two interface brim pieces. Before I start the sewing process, I am going to adhere my interfacing to my fabric with my iron and iron out any other wrinkles. Make sure your two pieces mirror each other and are not two of the same. Now we are going to start assembling the hat. Starting with the lining, sew with right sides together. To attach the circular top, I folded it in half, marking with chalk to mark it into quarters. I also divided the hat pieces into quarters so I can line up my markings when pinning. Once it was pinned into place, I sewed. Then repeated the same steps with the fleece fabric. Then I sewed the two brim pieces right sides together and attached it to the rest of the hat and repeated the same steps for the lining piece as well. Okay, so after I made the first variation, which was the navy blue, um, I actually went in already and altered it already, so I can't show you what I did wrong. I got a little excited the other day and just like went in and fixed it. So unfortunately I can't show you, but the ends were flipping out a little bit too much. I didn't reshape the whole pattern by extending that little bit and I should have. So for the next variation, I decided to just go back to the original pattern that I used and get rid of that extra corner piece that I added that I thought was gonna give the hat more structure. But now that I've made it with the two pieces of fleece and interfacing, the brim has the right amount of structure that I was looking for. So for the yellow rendition, I actually got the brim exactly the way I wanted it the second time, which was great. So I now knew what I had to do to fix the navy one, which I obviously already did. But the one thing that I didn't figure out or think of during the sewing process was how to hide the seams on the inside because I wanted it to be fully lined, but I didn't want you to see the seams. And on this one, I didn't fix it. I left it as is because I did leave exposed seams. Essentially, I just sewed the brim so it was right sides together, leaving this raw edge on the outside. And then I just stitched the, um, the lining of the hat into it, um, which is why I have these two exposed seams. But in my next and final rendition, which is how I finally got it right, so it took me three tries, I will show you how I avoided all this and what I did. But the fit of it is so cute. Again, I don't really know if I'm like a bucket hat person, but I just really think they're adorable and 
yeah, I'm kind of motivated to make matching masks as well. Just like a whole ensemble. I don't know. Okay, well, we'll see how this goes. So for, I'm gonna take this off now. Okay, so the way I'm going to have a nice clean finish on the inside is I actually sewed my two pieces completely separately. This is the outside fabric and I chose to put the interfacing on the top side just so that's the side that feels more secure. And for the bottom, this is the lining. So I just used white fabric because that's all I really have. I didn't have anything that was close enough to this color, but you don't actually really see it once it's on. So I didn't really think the color of the lining fabric mattered. Um, and what I did was I kept a hole here so I can sew these two items right sides together and then flip it right side out through the hole. And that is what I'm going to do now. Okay, now that it's all sewn with right sides together, I'm going to find that hole and start pushing the hat through. I try to like make, pay attention to the corners and make sure that I sewed everything correctly and there's no holes. Because now is the time to fix it because I will be sewing up that hole on the inside. And it doesn't seem to be, it seems to be good. So now it's just time to pin this and sew. Okay, so my stitch is complete, the hat is complete. Now it's just time to kind of like fluff it out. Oh my God, I'm obsessed. Okay, so I have decided that I'm definitely going to tackle the masks. Okay, so I just finished the mask and honestly, it turned out so cute. I love it. I decided to go with adjustable straps on the side. That way I can make sure that it's going to fit me. And also I found it really annoying to like measure these out and tie them the right length. And I just thought doing something with this was quite easy. So I opted for that. And now I am going to finish the other colors and make more masks so everyone has its matching set and um yeah it's working out pretty well right now i'm quite surprised since i don't know how protective fleece is i wanted to make these masks three layers two layers of cotton and one layer of fleece i also just used a generic mask pattern i found on pinterest that i've altered over time to start i'm going to sew both lining pieces with right sides together and repeat the same for the fleece fabric. To attach the lining pieces together, I'm going to sew down the sides with right sides together. Once I flip that right side out, I'm going to pin it to my fleece fabric, being mindful to have the wrong side of the fleece fabric facing me, and sew a straight stitch at the top and bottom. Once sewn, I am going to flip right side out. To finish off the sides, I'm going to serge the raw edges, and then I'm going to fold over the excess fabric and sew a straight stitch to create a tunnel for our draw cord. Now that the mask itself is done, it's time to insert the draw cord. I'm using this nylon cord that I happen to have laying around. It's not the most comfortable, but it will do for now. Once I threaded it through the tunnel, I just kind of eyeballed how much to cut off to make a sliding knot, I am going to create a single knot and wrap one end an additional time around to create a loop and thread the loose end through that loop and repeat the same thing to the other side. I love the way this turned out. I honestly probably won't be wearing these indoors, but as an outdoor mask, I love this idea. I'm just happy to have something a little bit warmer for the winter time because I find sometimes, especially since I do wear the disposable masks more often, um, I find that my face gets so cold. So now I don't need to. I am so excited how this turned out. 
I love my bucket hats and I love my matching masks. I'm so excited. I actually have quite a bit of the fleece material left over and I don't know what I'm going to do with it all. So I am debating on making a few more hats and maybe selling them on a Depop or something. So if anyone would be interested in maybe purchasing a hat, let me know by giving this video a thumbs up and also in the comments. So that's something I can work on in the upcoming weeks in lockdown because there's not a whole lot going on over here in Toronto. So with all that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you would like to see more fashion DIY content, please be sure to subscribe and let me know what you think below. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Thank you.